everybody, it is Romania Black, and we are on episode 18 of Free Ren Beyond Journey's End. And I'm super excited, but kind of trepidatious because I'm like, Cyan is going on their quest and they seem totally fine with it. Free Ren and Stark and Fern are totally fine with it. And we have to get to this wonderful city that I can't pronounce the name of, even though y'all have told me, <laughs> to take some kind of exam. I don't know. It seems like the SAT. We'll just sit down in a big lecture hall, take a written exam. Free Run's going to be in the back reading her smut. It's going to be all great, right? <laughs> so I don't exactly know how that works. I feel like Free Run took the exam years and years ago, but is she going to get there and they're going to be like, yeah, your test scores have expired and you got to retake the exam? Or are they going to honor her since she's defeated the Demon King? I would think that that would kind of supersede, you know, I, I feel we'll put some multiple measures in where it's like, oh, well, yeah, your exam expired, Free Run, but you also defeated the Demon King. So I guess we'll let you go. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to happen, though. I could see them in this world being like, nah, you got to take the exam, too, with Fern. And then it'll be like, Free Run's the non-traditional student taking the exam with her daughter, Fern. And Fern's like, mom. And then Stark just has to sit on the sidelines. I'm going to be curious to see what all Stark is going to do this entire arc or episode. I don't know if they're going to make the exam an arc. I could see them doing that. Um, or if it's just going to be like a one-off episode where she does the thing and it's fine. Um, I don't know. Regardless, it's like, well, what is Stark going to do during all of this? Is he going to take an exam to become a mage? I don't know, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it this episode. Um, I do want to talk about uh, a comment from Christopher Peterson talking about Himmel in the flashback um, back a couple episodes ago uh, with Vol and that entire deal um, with episode 16, I believe it was. And talking about how maybe Himmel in the flashback when he saw Vol and how he had this love for his wife that caused him to look over this village for like 400 years. Maybe Himmel realized in that moment, oh, if I pursue Free Rin and she, you know, it's kind of a weird thing. We don't exactly know. We're not going to know Himmel's entire thought process on this until we see him in heaven, until she gets to have that conversation with him, because that's the whole point of the series is for her to get to that point, or at least that's the, the big crux of this entire journey. So, I, I don't know for what we're going to get from Himmel when we get to that point, but I feel like Christopher Peterson's comment was suggesting that Himmel realized the implication of Vol having these feelings towards his human wife, and then after she died, he kind of just labored on there for hundreds and hundreds of years trying to keep up her memory, and maybe Himmel didn't romantically pursue Freerun because he wanted to avoid her having that heartache and avoid having her like chasing after him after he was gone. And so that's why he was totally fine with her not showing up until 50 years later. And it was the end of his life. And he's like, Oh, I got to have this one moment with her. Awesome. I can die at peace now. And that'd be the case. Well, jokes on you, Himmel. <laughs> she did carry that memory. It did linger with her and she is like Vol. So if that was, if that was what Himmel was trying to avoid, sorry, pal. <laughs> Although, although, I feel like Himmel's fine with her having this love for him. It just kind of sucks that he had to die before she realized it. But we, we've shed our tears over that, right? We've grieved over that, right? So I'm really excited to dive into this episode. Um, I am skipping the OP, though. I'm just going to give you fair warning because last week the OP was new, but I saw a flash of characters I didn't know, and I was like, oh, we need to meet these characters first before I feel like I'm comfortable watching the OP. So bear with me, I'm gonna watch it. It just may be a couple more episodes until we see these new faces and we get more context to who they are. Because I tend to, if I watch an OP and it gives me spoilery things, I'm gonna figure it out and I just can't do that. I wanna, I wanna be surprised. So I'll get to that, don't you worry. Um, and then we'll get to see it in context. So I did skip the OP, the ED seemed fine, um, but we did do that. So we're gonna start uh, episode 18 of Free Run and dive right in. I'm super excited. We're going to do that here in three, two, one, and let's, uh, let's do this. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm fearing that Stark is just going to be sitting in that city, like 
whittling, <laughs> carving. Like maybe he goes to a blacksmith, gets his axe redone. I don't know. I feel I feel like Stark's not gonna have much to do this this arc, but that's okay. That's okay. I feel like maybe that's why. Leading up to this point, we had a lot of Stark focus because we had the whole thing with him being the the doppelganger for the one man's son that's like a distant relative. We've had that. We've had all the stuff with Ice and developed. I feel like maybe all of the Stark things we've been doing leading up to this has just been to like develop his character to a point and be like, okay, good. We developed Stark. Now we're going to sit you over here and we're going to worry about Fern and Freerin here. Mainly, I think, I think we're going to work a lot with Fern in this second half um in this arc because we have this exam but we gotta we gotta talk about that's why we're touching on free run first we're gonna focus on fern later because it has Ubel in it and Ubel is very intriguing um but i i feel like we've got to talk touch base a little bit with with free run and it's nice for free run to see her dealing with two very young mages who quarrel and maybe have a secret lesbian love affair <laughs> in the works um but don't want to admit it and I, I like that we have Free Run and Fern in teams that I think when they walk away from this at the end, they're going to be like, wow, we didn't have it bad. <laughs> we were actually doing pretty good with our party for all our little kinks and quirks. So let's get into this because I want to bring White Boar Coon out because there's some bits of information that are just casually mentioned in this episode and they're not really um, given a whole lot of extra context. But so apparently you have to be at least, uh, apparently they're like, going through this and they're like don't you know freerun they say only a handful of the most skilled mages ever gained a first class certification so there are seven that are uh listed here seven individuals right off the bat that are that have the first class certification a only seven the one at the very front looks like that damn imp that was in the first OP that they that the show just casually wanted to just bring up, point out, and then dip out and be like, oh, who's that? Who be that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the imp is one of them, or so we think. Might not be, but it looks like the imp from... There's like a stack of books next to them, and the first OP had them like behind bookshelves of books. So that's interesting. Then you have like one with really, really long hair. That's interesting. Looks like maybe a woman. There's one that looks like an elder gentleman. There's one that kind of looks like Himmel with the cape. And then another one that kind of looks like Hyder. There's one that looks very distinguished. He has like a little, the little, um, oh, I forget what they're called, but they're like the big scarf in front. And then there's one that looks like the most traditional Merlin-esque mage possible. Like when you think of a wizard or a mage, you think of the one with the big crooked hat, right? So the one with the hat interests me the most and then the one that looks like the imp from the OP interests me the most. But there are seven first class mages that they they list off the bat there. And the one that looks like the imp is the one that's like right out in front. They look like an elf. So interesting. Maybe they're like the oldest elf in existence. I don't know. We don't know the lifespan of elves. We just know craft's been around for a freaking long time. And here's the thing. Fern underestimates herself. Fern is like, oh, well, I could never be a first class mage. And Free Run's like, yes, you can. You just, you're underestimating yourself. Of course you can. It seems like this certification is more than just a, a test of strength. It's a test of a lot of things. And they kind of go through the list of what all you need to have to have that certification. And Fern, I think, has a lot of those things. She's still young and inexperienced, but she's like, I think that she's underestimating herself. And she's like, why do we need to be accompanied by a crazy powerful mage to enter the North Plateau? Well, I mean, they've hinted that throughout the entire series so far, that the North Plateau has been inhabited by some very, very cunning magic users and monsters. So, yeah, they've hinted that from the start. It's a dangerous region that can't be crossed, that you once couldn't cross without a priest and a skilled mage. So, I know Kraft is a monk. He's not a mage. Um we assume that the person next to him that Cyan saw was a priest, but maybe he was a mage. We don't know. Um, it does worry me a little bit that they don't have a priest anymore and yet they're expected to cross, but she did say once you couldn't cross without a priest and a skilled mage. So maybe times have changed and you, you can have either or and you'll be okay. 
We'll see. I do like that the castle and the city is like in the middle of a lake, so it kind of protects itself. A skilled mage is required to travel through the area. Something serious must be happening in the Northern Plateau. Yeah, it's it's very... There's like little hints and rumblings that have been throughout the series of some bad stuff happening in the North, which is where they have to go to. So it's not like the series is just bringing this up out of nowhere. They've been hinting at it the whole time. We just don't know to the extent of how bad it is. So there's that. Now, wasn't there... There's seven skilled first-class certification mages, and we think that the imp is one of them. Didn't they also say that there were seven demon lords? So I feel like that number seven is coming up quite often. I feel like that there were equal number of demon lords to the mages. I don't know. So free run says they're going to take the exam once they arrive in the city. There's a combat test, which I think Fern and free run would be perfectly fine for. I think they could, yeah, they're like, aren't you powerful enough to handle any kind of test? And free run's like, you know, don't, don't sell me short. Like, I appreciate you talking me up, but it's not just about being strong. And then she gets mad because she calls her old. I, free run, you're a thousand years old. At this point, you are the granny of the group. And I like that Stark and Fern try to apologize, but free run's like, you both called me old. And then she wants to sleep it off because of course she does. Old granny needs a nap afterwards, but Fern's boobs are in the way. <laughs> so she's like, I can't see the sky because of your bosom. Sorry. And then she says that, you know, just so you know, um, mana is the only factor that determines a mage's strength. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean the, the boob joke was in poor taste. But the moment she says that, they, like, focus in on Fern's bosom. And I'm like, is that a determining factor? Otherwise, Free Ren, maybe that's why people underestimate her. But she says that there's more than that. It's not the only factor. She says that there is technique, experience. So we have the tech. We have the experience. We have the spells that are used. We have control of said spells. But aside from that, she's like, there's also effort and tenacity. If we are basing this, then we have six areas um, and mana. So seven. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Seven first class certified mages seven techniques. I wonder if each of these seven certified mages specializes in one of these techniques. It would make sense if that were the case, but I don't know if they'll go that far. And then Stark says those sound like warrior traits. And it's like, and finally, oh, and there's talent. So I guess there's eight, which, you know, if we have an eighth certified first class mage, sure thing. Then there is talent. So interesting. In my life, I've lost 11 times to mages who had less mana than me. So Freerun makes the point of saying that she has lost 11 times. But she had other people backing her up, which is why she didn't die. So she says, I've lost 11 times to mages who have mana less than me. So those that had less mana. Now, does that mean she's only lost 11 times? No, but it means that she's lost 11 times to weaker opponents in terms of mana. So she said four of them were demons, one of which was Qual, so we know one of them. So basically, Himmel had to take down Qual. How nice of him. How nice that our Jesus took down that monster. Awesome. Qual was one of them. And then she said one was an elf like me. I I can't imagine who that might be. I can't imagine who that one elf that took her down might be. It could be the imp-like elf that's been in the OP that's been hinted at, but who knows? One was an elf like me, and the remaining six were humans. Okay. Which, I think that says something very important that, you know, we assume that because Freerun is an elf that she's invincible because she's nearly immortal. But that's not necessarily the case. She can be defeated by humans quite easily as long as, you know, they have these other qualifications that she didn't have. So so that's interesting. I wonder if we're ever going to find out who the other demons and humans were. That would be interesting to find out. I'm very curious about that, who the elf is and all of that. But so as far as mana goes, Freerun has this in the bag. And Fern has a lot of it too. 
Um, technique, experience, Freerun definitely has the experience. The spells used and control of them, Freerun has a lot of that. But I would say that Fern has the, the effort, the tenacity, and the talent. And the technique would cover both of them. So I feel like Fern sells herself short, but Freerun's saying, like, Freerun's like, I'm not a prodigy. I've just had the opportunity to have a long time to practice and a long time to build up my strength. So that's what makes me good. You, even though you've not been on this earth very long, have a lot of talent and technique and effort and tenacity. That's going to go a long way to making you strong. And Free Run's like, I don't necessarily have the natural born talent that you do. I've just been able to practice it for a very, very long time. So then we cut to Ubel. Ubel is so interesting. I love her design. She has the sailors, the sailor Pluto, green hair, purple eyes. She kind of looks like um, in Sailor Moon, the villains. They were like the gemstones in one season. She kind of looks like Emerald a little bit. But she is like badass goth bitch. Like I would cosplay as Ubel if I was uh, cosplaying as a free run character. I love her design. I love her outfit. But she is definitely a killer and i like that she kind of flips it on her head where the guy the guys are like oh hello miss we're gonna take advantage of you and she's like oh hell no bitch no no i love her and i love how her staff has a little emerald hanging from it the gemstone but it also has like the trident at the top and the spear at the bottom it's like no one is safe from this girl she gives me yandere vibes so i'm kind of like is she gonna develop a crush for fern and be like yonder over her. Stark, run for the hills if that happens. Because this girl looks like she ain't afraid to kill people. She's like, we're finally enjoying peace. But now I'm seeing more of these types. And the moment that guy was like, who told you to speak? She's like, mm, yeah, no. She was going to kill them all. But then Kraft shows up. Now, Kraft makes the um, comment that she killed the other bandits out of self-defense. He's like, I mean, you took the time to bury them. So clearly she comes across as being this like no nonsense. Oh, I don't care about anybody. And I'm just out for me attitude. But she did take the time. Well, now here's the thing. She may have left the bandits to die and Kraft may have buried them. Wait a minute. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, oh, well, she may have killed the bandits, but she took time to like bury them. So it was in self-defense, but then she felt bad afterwards. No, Kraft may have found the bodies and he buried them because he's a monk. Never mind. So yeah, but Kraft comes in and has mercy on these guys and is like, look, I'm going to tell you that you need to go because she's going to kill you if I don't stop you. And I like that Kraft wasn't trying to get in her way necessarily. He wasn't trying to stop her, but instead he was like, I'm going to try to be proactive and get these guys to leave. And if they're smart, they'll go and they won't get killed by you. I will say the green and black combo with the gold elements that Kraft has and Ubel has, I was kind of wanting them to travel together because I thought for a second, like maybe he could be a, an influence on her and like help her like, cause she seems very anti, she's very ageist. She's very anti elderly folks. She's like, Oh, get out old man. I'm like, wait till she meets free Ren and thinks that she's the eldest granny under the sun. What if she meets free Ren? And she's like, I hate books. <laughs> and free Ren's like you bitch. Like that's the straw. And she's like, Oh, thanks for saving me. I'm Ubel the mage. And she's like, Oh, are you an elf? I've never met one before. Mm hmm. And he doesn't really reply to that because I feel like as an elf, you're always on self-defense where you don't want to reveal too much about yourself because you're targeted. But he says you have the eyes of a killer. Yeah, like Kraft has the little light in his eyes, the little glimmer, the gleam. She does not. Ubel's eyes are pretty stone cold. And she's like, mm-hmm. And he's like, I didn't rescue you. I saved those other guys. Yeah, I found the torn up bodies of bandits near the woods. Yeah, so he buried them out of, you know, courtesy and she just left him for dead. And she's like, did you come to lecture me? And he's like, no, I, I appreciate Kraft so much. He's been around so long and he's ancient. He's like, I'm not lecturing you. He's like, I'm an adventurer too. I get it. You killed him out of self-defense, whatevs. But he's like, I'm just telling you, you know, you're making a scene. I feel like... Ubel is the polar opposite of Freerin so far in terms of like Ubel is just out in the open flaunting like yes I'm strong you got a problem with it and she's gonna like kill you if you get in her way whereas Freerin is trying so hard to fly under the radar and not be noticed 
And it's just that difference. And we don't know exactly how old Ubel is, but yeah, he's like, I'm an adventurer too, but I'm not so hard headed to criticize someone for killing in self defense. And she's like, good old man. I just saved the lives that I saw in front of me. She's like, yeah, I'm going to take the first class mage exam. And then he's like, oh, well, that's where Freerun's going. And for a hot second, I was like, oh, is Kraft going to follow her and go see Freerun? No. I, <laughs> I'm watching a series um, called, I'm reading the manga for Berserk right now. Um, and all I will say, without spoiling anything, is that there's a character in Berserk that he just shows up is so badass and cool and is very cryptic and mysterious. You don't know a lot about him, but he shows up and does these cool things. And then he's like, oh, okay, bye, and pieces out. And you're like, no, stay, I want to know more about you. And he doesn't do it. He just leaves and you're left wanting more. That is that is the vibe that I get from, uh, that's the vibe I get from Craft. And I wish we had more of him, but I understand what the show is doing with his character, but I'm just like, but I want you to show up more. But anyway, so we have the Continental Magic Association. I love this, like, Continental Magic Association. And the, the exam's administered every three years. So we know that this is Ubel's first time back after three years trying to take the exam again. I'm like, oh, cool. Um, that adds some perspective that if they don't pass it, they're not going to um, be allowed to come back in. The girl with the glasses and the hat, she reminds me of a character from Seraph of the End. Um, and then asking them, like, you have to have a certification of fifth class major higher to take the exam. And Free runs instantly like, bye. And Fern's like, no, 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 you need to stay. I can't do this alone. What if I, what are we going to do if I fail? We'd have to wait three years. You need to do it too. So that at least one of us could pass. Now, the moment that Fern said that, I wondered if maybe Freerin or Fern, one of them is going to fail. I don't necessarily know which one would yet. I won't be surprised if something happens where Freerin doesn't fail, but one of her group members gets outside the barrier. Because they said if anybody gets outside the barrier, their team automatically fails. So I wouldn't be surprised if Freerin or Fern one of their team members gets kicked outside the barrier, which causes all of them to fail. I won't be surprised if that ends up happening, especially if Freerun ends up failing because one of either Kenny or Lain ends up getting outside of the barrier and it causes all of them to, to flunk the exam. I won't be surprised if that happens, but then it's all resting on Fern to pass the certification. And she's with Ubel, who wants kind of the same thing. So we'll see. Um, but I do appreciate... Freerun trying not to be a helicopter parent. She's like, I, she's like, I don't want to hold your hand for all of this. You can do some stuff on your own. You don't need me. And I'm glad for that. And I'm glad that Freerun and Fern end up on different teams so that they both kind of have to do their own thing. They can't just rely upon each other. For Fern, it's relying upon Freerun for obvious reasons with skill and experience. But for Freerun, it's relying on Fern kind of like, so she doesn't have to do certain things, right? I'm amazed Free Ring gets up at the crack of dawn, but I'm sure that Laeen and I'm sure Laeen and Kinney like start fighting as soon as they wake up, and it probably wakes Free Ring up as well. But yeah, I do like this moment where Free Ring's like, "No, you can do this," and so she brings up, you know, the antique, which is the holy emblem, and they all freak out and are like, "Oh shit, she's had this from 600 years ago, and this is like the highest certification possible." Oh, ha. Huh. And the funny thing is that Freerin seemed to think that it was impressive. That I like that we, we flash back to before and kind of see how the city has changed from having all of like the, the different taller buildings and the archways to being like in the past where there's no lamppost, there's no electricity. It's like in a moat, it's a little bit different. But... And that was only that was only like 80 years ago. So it's not been like hundreds and hundreds of years. It's only been 80 years, but there's still been so much architectural change. But I like that Freerun thought that it was impressive when she spins around, shows them the antique. And she's like, I, it's pretty impressive. I have this, right? Like seeing her be kind of like cocky is so interesting. And then Himmel and Hater are like, we don't know what that is. And it seems like that instantly made her feel dejected. Like, oh, it's not so special because these people I hold in high regard don't think that it's special. But not only that, you have basically medieval Jesus telling you that you don't need the emblem to prove you're a great mage. And Fern and Stark kind of say the same thing. And 
pretty much if you if you say anything that was close to what Himmel said, you will get head pats. You will get rewarded if you em if you emulate Himmel in any way, shape, or form, which Fern and Stark do sometimes. And Freerun's like, that's why I keep you around. <laughs> I did want to take Freerun's hair and like push it out from that necklace that that bothered me so much. I was like, get that necklace under that hair. But what is? So yeah, I love that her friends all think she's an incredible mage, and she's like, well, you're all gonna die soon anyway, so it doesn't matter being all Cindere. Himmel's face when he looks at her, she walks away when he's like, damn it, I know. I was like, ah, I hate it. I was like, I hate that he knows that he's short-lived and he won't be able to be with her. Show, why do you do this? Why do you throw us to the ringer? Why do you make us suffer? Just, just why? Why can't we have one Himmel free run flashback that doesn't torture us, please? So yeah, so they go, they have two months to train, which is fun. We find out that Fern took the third class certification because it had the soonest available test date. So she actually could be much stronger than third class. We just don't know because that was the soonest test date she could take. I'm like, come on now. Also, I feel eternally sad for Stark who has nothing to do, but they give us some numbers, right? There are 600 mages who are at least fifth class. They give us that detail. And then they say that right now there are apprentices from sixth to ninth class. So sixth to ninth class, I guess those are the lower classes. Um, with them included, there's like 200, 2000 mages total. And there's like 45 that are first class. I'm guessing that these seven are the OGs that everything's probably the standards based off of. Still, 2000 mages is not a lot, not crazy, but considering the certification is so hard, then that makes sense. In many years, nobody passes the test at all. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that, you know, if they have an exam year and nobody passes, that keeps your numbers low like they are. He's like, she's like, there's a lot fewer mages these days. A century ago when the Demon King's attacks intensified, there'd be a whole lot of mages. So it's kind of one of those things where, you know, supply and demand, because there were a lot of Demon King attacks, they needed more mages. So more people were trying to get certified to use magic and do that. But now it's not the case and there's not as many certified. So that part all makes sense. All right, so I have two months to prepare. Poor Stark. He just has nothing to do. I do love that we get Freerun's little birthday. Like she gets like a chicken, some croissants, this big old birthday cake with a bunch of candles and strawberry shortcake. Bless you, Freerun. That's so cute. What? When was this? When is her birthday? We said that it was over the course of two months. They got there, what, in the winter months? So is it a spoiler to know her birthday? I'd like to know her birthday down below. And then I love that she just like lands on Fern and Fern's like, yep, sleepwalking again, Freerun. And then they fly through the night. It's so cute, like up against the moon. It's adorable. So yeah, so it's exam day. We have Jeannot, who is our first class mage, who's proctoring the exam. I would be fearful if I was him, because Ubel. Oh, so he's the one with the, um, with the little, uh, Jeannot is one of them. Jeannot, where's he at? Jeannot is one of the first class ones that was in this group here. He had the little handkerchief, the little scarf. I know it's like called a, is it a cravat? What is it called? I can't think of its name, but he has one of them. Levi and Attack on Titan wears one. So we have lots of people that are up to be watched. We have Werble, who is, let me get Werble on here. We have Werble, who is a second class, and he is a captain of the Northern magic core okay i feel like werble is not only does he look kind of beastly in his like design with all the hair and stuff i feel like he's gonna be a problem because he's from the northern magic core and we've established that there's a lot of strife and problems in the north and a lot of like rough demons so he probably is really strong because he's had to be to survive up there and he probably is going to be desperate to get certified because he's here for reasons so We'll see how that goes. He fought against the remnants of the Demon King's forces for years. Ah, only a few mages are granted the title. Yeah. So he's been fighting against the remnants of the Demon King's forces. He would be interesting to see um, connect to Freerun 
and see what's up with that. Like, what would he think of her since she's the one that helped defeat the Demon King? What would he think about that? I feel like he would have a chip on his shoulder because he's been dealing with the remnants of the Demon King's forces in the north. And Freerin has been casually gathering up mushrooms. <laughs> And random cleaning spells for the last 80 years. So I feel like if he meets Freerin, he might have a beef against her because he'll be like, hey, I've been cleaning up the leftovers from your battle while you've been doing what? Sleeping and gathering random little useless spells? And Freerin will be like, um, okay. So that could be a really interesting conversation between those two if they get to meet up. Okay. Then we get Dinkin, who is the crafty old second class mage. Um, they're like, the exam's quite dangerous. I like they're talking like in the background, like this is a very dangerous exam. So then we have Dinkin. He is also a second class. What do they say about him? He kind of has like an Ison feel to him. And they're like, but the association will not intervene regardless of what happens to you. So they're pretty much like, here, sign this liability waiver that says you might die if you don't pass this exam. Huh. And they're like, oh, a bloody struggle for power and became an imperial mage. Okay. Again, we're tying to another character like Werble, who has had to deal with conflict and has become a mage or stayed a mage to fight. Whereas Freerun has been actively pacifist. So that could be a very interesting conversation between him and Freerun. He also seems to have some aging experience. I feel like Dinkin and Werble could come from... The idea of we've been fighting these battles constantly and you've been running away or hiding and address free room from, from that front. But you have Werble, who's maybe the more younger one, and Denkin, who's more experienced. And I, I'm very interested to see if either of them will talk to Free Ren and have conversations about that with her. Then they're like, Fern, the youngest mage to ever receive a third class certification with top marks. Girl could have done better. She could have gone higher than third class. I think she just settled. But flying under the radar, right? And then the problem children. The one guy with glasses that like adjusts them. He looks like a character from Full Metal Alchemist. Um, they're the problem children. Ubel, a third class mage who failed the exam two years ago. Not because she wasn't talented, but because she killed the proctor. The first she killed the first class mage who proctored it. I okay. <laughs> so we have Ubel, who's third class. Only because of her, like, I don't want to call it arrogance, but she is able to kill a first-class mage. That should not go unnoticed. We talk about talent and uh, tenacity. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. And she just looks over at them like, what you going to do? And I like the one girl who goes, ew. And they're like, who else looks promising? And they're like, oh, yeah, there's Free Run. Who's she? <laughs> who be that? So yeah, so they're going to announce the, announce the content of the first test in this exam. So this is just part one. We're on episode 18 now. We have like 10 episodes left. I don't know if we're going to finish the exam in this season. We might finish the exam this season. We're definitely not getting to heaven this season if this is only part one of the exam. I don't know. We're definitely not getting to, to heaven. That's going to have to wait to another season. But... I feel like maybe we'll get close to the exam finishing or at least finish the exam. So they have 57 exam takers split into teams of three for the first test. So we have 57 all together that are trying to become first class. That's a reasonable number in teams of three. I am not a uh, mathematician and my dogs are being very rude. Um, but I'm going to like even out here, I'm not a math person. And, 57 odd numbers are weird um so there's 19 teams okay 19 teams um how many are gonna pass it i don't know my dog wants me to throw my toy so hold on just oh or ruby's gonna grab it never mind um but yeah so they get these bracelets that signify what team they're on so there's 19 total and free Rin is part of team number two and she finds finds her two that are in her, in her team and i like that she's like look she makes a fair point saying these teams of mages, mages probably have like a little bit maybe of a, a more elitist attitude. So putting these random teams together, people that don't know each other, luckily for her, she gets a team that does know each other. Um, she's like, it could lead to some very 
conflicting attitudes and making it to where it's harder to work together. Like I can see Fern and Ubel clashing a lot because their uh, ways of approaching things are very different. So I could see them having a lot of problems uh, working together. Freerun is lucky enough that even though Kine and Longing fight all the time, they have good camaraderie when it counts. So she's very fortunate in that regard. Because otherwise I think Freerun would be like, what do I do with y'all? Um, whereas Fern, it's going to be interesting to see how they connect. Um, but yeah, so she's like, they're fighting already. Then we have this one team. I it said They all have ends. So I don't know. This guy that's the blonde with the glasses, I, I fear for him. I don't feel like he's long for this world. <laughs> I feel like he's going to end up dying or something. He just, he screams red shirt to me. And I don't know if Ubel's going to kill him or something's going to happen. But I don't feel like he's long for this world. And Ubel and Fern are going to have to come to blows. She's like, oh, nice to meet you. And Fern's like, nice to meet you. <laughs> Ubel is surprisingly nonchalant right now but we we got a little hint of how she can really be so i'm a little concerned about that Ubel seems like the type of person that would definitely use her teammates even though she knows that she needs them all intact to win i don't know and maybe she's hoping that they'll all just follow along and not be any trouble causing but We'll see how that goes. I do like some of the mage's designs right off the bat. There's lots of witches' hats. You can see Werble in the background. You can see him kind of lurking back there. You see Dinkin in there as well. And they're on different teams, so that's interesting. Then we have a, a still, this bird. I, that can go the speed of sound. Awesome. I'm so curious how they're going to catch this bird. I don't know if they saw the barrier and thought maybe that was a way to catch it i also like that dinkin has the he has the cage strapped to the lapels of his coat so interesting can he lure birds in with his sweet old manliness i don't know i also like that he has like um the one girl with the the meat buns behind her interesting where's werbel's group do we get to see them yeah we see werbel's group he has that sweet bitchin coat with the fringe i relate alongside this other guy and girl that look like they are not long for this world either i don't know i werbel and Ubel kind of make me think that they might cause trouble meanwhile while he's explaining what's going on these two are chasing after each other and free Rin's like i did not sign up to babysit <laughs> She's like, why did I agree to this? Why did I think this was a good idea? Why why did I doubt Fern and Stark? So they're like, you can do mostly as you wish, but if anyone leaves the testing area, then the entire party fails the test. Okay, so there is that barrier. And they reach the edge of it. Uh-huh. They, hmm. they reach the edge of it. So I wonder if they're going to use that to try to catch the bird. I don't know. Maybe the bird can't leave the testing area, so they're going to try to use that. They're like... That won't let so much as a speck of dust through. It's not like we can get out. There, what does she say there? She's like, it's not like we can get out. Okay, so there's a barrier there, so they can't leave it. Okay. So maybe they're going to use that to, like, trap the bird and make it hit the barrier and, like, knock itself out. Maybe I would say that would be the way to go. But how you're going to get the bird to do that, I don't know. I like this girl with the blonde hair and, like, the sweet cape and corset in the front row here. I'm interested to see if we get any of these other teams involved or if it's mainly going to be the four teams with Werble, Dinkin, Ubel, Fern, and Freerun and these two that are just fighting nonstop. And Freerun's like, can we just introduce ourselves? Can we do that? So we find out that Kine and uh, Lain have been in school together training to be mages which is interesting to know that there are like mage schools because fern was trained kind of by hater and free Ren, and free Ren was trained by flom i'm not surprised there are mage schools that seems like it's a, it's not like a jedi apprentice and master situation there are actually academies for mages it's just probably like basic magic like flying and things like that but these girls might be like the cream of the crop from those schools that came here to get more certified interesting so yeah, they keep moving and she's like, check for the skies. The one thing I want to tell Freerun is like, 
the whole check for the skies thing, I get you don't want to be a helicopter parent, but if it was a life or death bird, if it was like, oh, the reason I want you to check for the skies is because there's this man eating bird that could come down and kill you at any moment, you can just go ahead and say that. You don't have to like wait until I find out when I'm when I let my guard down and nearly die. So I'm like, damn it, free run. <laughs> I do like when Lion like like presses Kine away. It's great. And they have like the the complementary orange and blue. Also orange is a secondary color and blue is a primary color. So I like that you have Lion who seems to be like the stronger of the two represented by the primary color of blue and then Kine who is in orange is like the secondary color and she gets represented. So that's a lot of fun. I like that little subtle color, color thing. I also like uh, Lyene's outfit a lot as well. So very cool. But yeah, and then Kenna is like, wow, you're like a teacher, Freerun. You make a good leader. And she's like, <laughs> I like Freerun's like, I have to do this because you both are ridiculous. Someone has to be the leader in all of this. And she's like, do you struggle to detect mana? I feel like at that point... Freerun realized that Kine might be in danger a lot because she doesn't seem like she can detect mana very well. So she couldn't detect the bird monster coming from a mile away. Whereas Lalyne was probably better at it. I also think when Freerun asks Lalyne being like, do you think you're stronger than me? It was a test to see what Lalyne would say. Because Lalyne's saying, no, I don't think I'm stronger than you. Freerun's like, okay, you're not cocky. I can trust you because you, you're self-aware. You know about your own experience. Good. I feel like she could connect her a little bit to Fern in that regard. But yeah, that bird being like able to fly at the speed of sound and get away. Oh my God. Insane. And I like that Freeman's like, no, just get down. I do love the idea of their powers coordinating and Kine can manipulate water and uh, Lying can freeze it. I love that. It's really sweet. It's, it's a very useful technique that could come in handy. I like it. I also liked it. I, free run and them get in the splash zone and free run's like, well, who didn't see this coming? <laughs> it's great. So yeah, there they decide to observe the bird to try to catch it. And she's like, their timing's per perfectly coordinated and they actually work really well together. We just have to like get them to work together and not fight the entire time. But yeah, then this bird monster shows up. I really honestly thought the moment that the bird fired that arrow and it like went or fired that beam and it went through Kine's shoulder, I thought it was another mage. I thought that the mages would like fight over the birds and she would be fought at by another mage to try to get the bird cornered. Thought that, and, and that's not to say it can't happen in the future, but I thought that's where they were going this episode. So I'm glad that Freerun managed to restrain the bird and save her. But Kine clearly draws from Lain as her, like, as her anchor, right? And she's like, I kind of depend on Lain. And Kine kind of has a praise kink. She likes to be praised. She likes that positive reinforcement. But, and Lain kind of, like, indulges her just a wee bit. But I really like the dynamic between Kine and Lain. They could have easily made these two characters very annoying, especially Kine and her, like, fighting constantly. But they managed to make them both relatable, and both of them, like, have this apparent friendship that is kind of sibling-like, kind of maybe partner-esque. But they, they make it work really well. I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed their characters by the end of this episode. Because at first I was like, oh, no, they're going to fight the whole time and be annoying. I was, like, free and being like, please stop. But they make their characters more endearing as it goes. Now, Lion suggests that, that Kine has had like this really good upbringing. She's been spoiled and pampered her whole life. And she's like, but I'll, but then she caves and compliments her anyway. So it's like, yeah. I do love the moment that she was like, you're really cute. And then that's when she's like, oh no. And then she kicks her off. I love that. I love she just yeets her off the cliff. It was great. And so then, yeah, she's like, Lion is rough, but she pulls me along with her. And I'll go for it even if I'm scared. Mm-hmm. And so then she notices something with the barrier and like a freaking Don Mai cliffhanger, they just end it there. And I was like, this episode went by so quickly. It went by so fast, setting everything up, getting that they're going to have to work together and do this. I'm like, oh, I, I'm really excited to see where it goes. I do not know if I'll be able to read comments before diving into episode 20 or diving into episode 19, rather. I'm counting 
my still eggs before they hatch. But I feel like they're going to catch the still. I feel like either their group is going to catch the still or fail next episode. And then we're going to cut in episode 20 to Fern's group. Maybe. Maybe not. But I can't believe that we ended this cliffhanger. I may not be able to wait for episode 19. We'll just have to see. So in any case, if I don't make it to the comments before episode 19, I am excited to hear your thoughts down below. But there's so much set up with this exam. So much set up with Fern and these two rambunctious girls, girlfriends. And um, I'm excited to see where it goes to from here. So I'm excited to hear your thoughts down below. And I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back real soon with more free run.